first of all, let's start with the question, what are pumps? I like to start my lessons with a question. So pumps are devices which convert the input mechanical energy into fluid flow energy, as you can see here. If you bought my previous course, Hydraulics 101, you learned that pumps, well, I, I hope you learned that pumps are energy converters that convert mechanical energy from the input to fluid flow energy on the output. Okay, as you can see here in this little graph. One thing that it's very important to remember is that pumps don't generate pressure. Okay, pumps generate flow. In this example, okay, we have a pump. Imagine we have a pump right here and it's connected directly with a one-way valve. Let's say here is a one-way valve to a reservoir, okay? And we turn on the pump and it generates flow and the flow of the fluid goes into the reservoir, it builds up and that's where the pressure rises, okay? Pumps generate flow, remember that. And one of the main specifications when we talk about pumps and when we choose pumps actually is the flow. So uh, when you talk about cars, when you say, oh, how much horsepower does it have? When we talk about pumps, we say, oh, how much flow does it give? How much flow does it generate? Let's talk about types of pumps. So we can divide pumps into three basic groups. Okay, so positive displacement pumps, which we will be covering in this course, centrifugal pumps, and axial flow pumps. So I already said that we will be covering positive displacement pumps. Why? Because positive displacement pumps are the ones that are used in hydraulic machines, hydraulic systems, and uh, hydraulics and mechanical engineering in general. Uh, Centrifugal pumps are used in other numerous applications uh, in various industries. They're used often in oil refineries and power plants. And they are also the pump of choice for municipal water applications. So if you live in a city or a town that has a water plant, uh, there are some big, chunky centrifugal pumps that work 24-7 uh, to supply the demand of water in your city. And on number three we have axial flow pumps and one of the most common applications of axial flow pumps would be in handling sewage from commercial, municipal and industrial sources. So let's talk about positive displacement pumps. So a positive displacement pump transfers energy using the change of the work volume. Let me go back here, so you can see here uh, the positive displacement pump, uh, the piston pump, it changes the volume, the work volume, right? It reciprocates left and right and that way it pumps the fluid. And a positive displacement pump, unlike a centrifugal or rotodynamic pump, uh, which is another name for a centrifugal pump, will produce uh, the same flow at a given speed, RPM, no matter the discharge pressure. So what does that mean? If we have a motor, an AC motor, for example, that's connected to a pump, and um, we are giving, a, the, the, the shaft is, is moving at a constant RPM, so we are giving a certain RPM. The flow of that pump is going to be the same no matter the pressure on this side. Okay, so it will always deliver same flow. And that's why a positive displacement pump is a constant flow machine. One negative side about positive displacement pumps is that we always have to have a safety valve in front of it. Why? Because a positive displacement pump uh, operating against a closed discharge valve uh, continues to produce flow until the pressure in the discharge line is increased, until the line bursts or the pump is uh, severely damaged, or both even. So if we have a pump and it's connected to a tank, for example, it's just gonna pump, it's just gonna generate flow until uh, the pressure here rises, until the tank bursts or the pump malfunct malfunctions. So that's why here we always have to have a safety valve, okay? so. Uh, after a positive displacement pump, 
we always have a safety valve. So right here in this picture, uh, you can see uh, the function of a positive displacement pump, more precise, the piston pump, and you can see it moving right and left, pumping, uh, pumping fluid. So we, we basically have the expanding cavity, the suction side, and the decreasing cavity, the discharge side. So when it goes right, it expands the volume, it expands the cavity, and the fluid gets sucked in. And when it goes left, it decreases the cavity, making uh, making the, the cavity smaller, the volume smaller, and increasing the pressure. And that drives the fluid in our, in our discharge valve. So I talked about this in Hydraulics 101. We're going to cover uh, piston pumps uh, in more detail in one of the next lessons. And basically, positive displacement pumps have two groups depending on how the suppressing element of the pump moves. So in this side, in this picture, we can see a piston pump and the suppressing element, the one that pushes the work fluid, is the piston, okay? You can see here the piston is in direct contact uh, with the work fluid. So depending on how the suppressing element moves, we have two classes, two groups of positive displacement pumps. So we have reciprocating positive displacement pumps and rotary positive displacement pumps. Reciprocating, the, 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 the name of uh, the, pumps, the pump suggests that it has reciprocating motion. As you can see here, the piston pipe, uh, the piston pump is a reciprocating positive displacement pump because the piston reciprocates left and right. Rotary positive displacement pumps use rotational motion. So well, in our next lessons, we're going to cover each of the types of pumps individually, but the typical reciprocating pumps are plunger pumps, as you can see here in the picture number one, diaphragm pumps right here, which we will not be covering, and we have piston pumps, which we covered uh, in the previous slide. And we he here we can see a picture, piston pump and plunger pump. So the main difference between a piston pump and a plunger pump is the suppressing element. As you can see, the piston covers the entire cross-sectional area of uh, the cavity and the plunger pump doesn't. It leaves some of the fluid uh, on the sides so it can pass. Uh, you can see here the piston pump is more effective. So rotary positive displacement pumps, uh, the typical uh, rotary positive displacement pumps are rotary vane pumps, gear pumps, and screw pumps. Okay, so these are rotary vane pumps, these are gear pumps, and these are screw pumps. In our next lessons, we're gonna talk about each of the pumps individually, so I hope you stayed focused, uh, I hope you learned something from this lesson, and uh, yeah, see you in the next lesson. Great job!